Hey friends, I'm Kat, this is Thomas, and we are the lead pastors of Hillsong Church in Denmark and Malmo, and we want to welcome you to our online church experience. Hey, we're about to have worship together and, you know, have an amazing service together. And I just want to encourage you, wherever you're watching this, to really just to lean in and be part of this and not just to spectate, you know, sing along and let's really have an amazing church experience together, wherever you're gathering right now. Later in the service, we also want to take time just to pray for you and whatever specific needs that you might be going through right now. So you could email in at pastoralcare at hillsong.dk and we're going to make sure that our team and us, we're praying for you guys. We hope you have an amazing uh, experience together and God bless you guys and we hope to see you soon. Hey, welcome to church, everyone. We're going to get started with some worship. I just want to encourage you that the Lord wants to use this time. Amen. He's not confined by a screen. And he wants to meet everyone right where they're at this morning. Amen. So let's give this moment up to him. Man. Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that your love is for us, God. Thank you that you desire to meet with us, Jesus. We give this moment up to you, Lord.
to my knees My King forever You are all my heart's desires Until the end of time My soul surrenders Be my anthem Lord, when the world has fallen apart You stand beside me Give me a song in the night Jesus, I need you every moment Remember love, remember mercy, Christ before me, Christ behind me, your loving kindness has never failed me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, remember love.
Christ before us. Man, we need Jesus more than ever. I just love that we can sing that and we can declare that together. This is a season where we, we need to turn to Jesus because at the end of the day, he is the one that we need. Hey, can we pray together before we get into the word of God? Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you that you are before us. Yes, we are surrounded by circumstances and situations right now. And you know what's happening in everyone's individual lives right now and people's families and with their loved ones, Lord God. And I just thank you that we can declare together, you are before us, Lord God. We fix our eyes upon you, Lord Jesus. And that's now as we gather around the word, I pray that you will speak through me like I believe you've spoken to me. Lord, I pray that you will take this message and just break it up into thousands of pieces that every person who watches and listens to this, Lord God, that you will speak to them exactly what they need to hear in this moment in history, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to be together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is so good. I'm so excited about uh, this service. I'm so excited about today that we are able to do this and meet like this. There's only a small crew that is here and a few cameras and, you know, ginormous lights around me. But hey, it's just so good that we can gather like this and in your home of all places. And what an amazing, what an amazing time we live in that, you know, even though we can't gather physically, that we can gather virtually. And I just pray, like we've said so many times before, even though we're distant, doesn't mean we have to be emotionally or relationally distant, but that we can still do life together. And I want to just share a message with you, and I, and I hope that this encourages you. And, and uh, you know, in our home, uh, we have uh, three girls, four if you count my wife, Kat, as well. And I don't know, have you ever had, you know, a moment where you had so much to say that you were unable to say it? Now, I don't want to generalize between boys and girls, but, you know, my girls seem to have a lot of words in their spirit. I mean, there are times... Where, where my girls will come running up to me and they're so excited about sharing something and, and they will come up and they, they're about to open their mouth, but nothing comes out. Either because they're overwhelmed with the feeling of what they're about to say for better or for worse, or maybe because you know there's so many words that are trying to come out of this little mouth that all of it kind of just gets clogged right there and nothing comes out. Or there's obviously the moments where everything comes out and makes absolutely no sense. You know, truth is this, we've all had moments where we've been so overwhelmed with the feeling, so overwhelmed with the moment where we just didn't know what to say. You have sat there with someone and, you know, maybe they've gone through grief or gone through something horrible in their life. And, you know, so often you hear people say, well, I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't know what words to frame the moment, it seems like every word I have is inadequate to really help in this time. And I think, I guess now more than ever, this is true in our lives with the times that we're in. The feelings of confusion, maybe the feeling of fear, the feeling of sadness, it's left us speechless. And it, it reminds me of a story that we find in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And it's in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9. It says, one day when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, he was the priest. He was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I'll give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head, and basically what she's saying is, he will serve you, God. Verse 12, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you gonna stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I'm a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went her way, ate something, and her face was no longer sad. Early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. 
and says at in verse 20 it says so in the course of time hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son she named him samuel saying because i asked the lord for him i, I want to just share a thought just briefly and simply called from a sigh to a shout from a sigh to a shout a few days ago our planet experienced something really special we had what is called a supermoon and what it was, was that a few nights ago, the moon was the closest to Earth that it will be in 2020. It meant that at its peak, uh, the, the, the moon looked like it was 30% larger than the normal size of the moon in the sky. I was, I was working late that night and about 2 a.m., I, I went out in our backyard and I just looked up at the moon. It was, it was a clear night and it was beautiful. And I was standing there and looking at the moon. I guess I just felt overwhelmed. I, um, I felt like praying. I, there was so much in my soul that, that I was concerned about. I, I wanted to pray and, and pray for wisdom and pray for grace and favor. I wanted to pray for our church. I wanted to pray for the finances of our church. I wanted to pray for the people of our church. I wanted to pray for my family and our children and safety for our loved ones and I guess in that moment I felt like so overwhelmed with everything in my soul and you know I, I guess I wanted to pray for everything and nothing and as I stood there I finally opened my mouth and as I was trying to put some words together about praying about what we should keep doing and stop doing and change and how we're doing it really all that came out was just a sigh just a, and that was it. I kind of looked at the moon again, and then I walked back into our house and I went to bed. Didn't really think much about it, but the next day, uh, I got a message from someone in our church who, who runs a big company here in, here in Denmark, and they said at 2 a.m. they woke up, and they felt this urge to pray for me. And they left their bed, and they, they got up, and they prayed, and they sensed that I was passionately praying about something. This, this, this incident, it moved me so much because really this person was saying that I was passionately praying, but really all I was doing was just giving a sigh in God's general direction. But it made me realize that a sigh in my mouth is a shout in God's ears. That as I sighed to the Lord, as I just breathe towards God it was like a shout in a loving God's ears you know we read this story from the Old Testament about Hannah she was desperate for a baby she was desperate for a breakthrough so she went to the temple she went to where she knew the presence of God was guys I pray this season changes us we are in an unprecedented time in history and I pray to pray that we will not waste this moment in history Never before has the world been stopped like this. Never before has a handbrake been pulled on all our agendas, on all our busyness, on all us, you know, running around and chasing stuff. A handbrake has been pulled on all our ambitions, all the distractions, just stopped. We have been stopped in our tracks. Question is, where do we turn to in this moment? Where do we look to? I pray that we turn to where we know the presence of God is. If you're out walking and you get lost, the rule is go back to where you know where you were. Go back to where you, you know it's familiar and then move from there. May this season be a season where we go back to where we knew we were. That we go back to where we knew the presence of God was. We go back in order to move forward. Some of us, we need to get back to our Bibles. Some of us, we need to get back to prayer. Some of us, we need to go back to the prayers that shaped us. Go back to the habits that made us. Go back to just worshiping at home where we, where we were taught and where we learned being in the presence of God all by ourselves. Church, let's go back in order to move forward. So it says that Hannah went to the temple and it said that Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. You know, when Jesus, he came to earth, he was, he, he arrived onto a scene where religious people, they were trying to impress each other with their fancy words and their 
you know, loud and amazing and thought out prayers. You know, they, at this point, prayers had almost become political speeches, had become these moments where people try to outdo one another and voice their opinions. Prayers had almost become spells where they thought that if I just had the right sequence of words and if I had the right construction of words, then it would produce an answer from God. Luke chapter 18 is a great example of this. It says in verse 9, it's such a sad story, but it's so true and it's so true sadly today as well. It says, to some who were confident of their own righteousness, and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. This was people that were looked down upon at the time. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. Listen to this prayer. Can you believe this? God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Can you believe this? I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He, wouldn't, he would not even look up to heaven. But he beat his chest and he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, he went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. See, Jesus, he's not about fancy words. Jesus is, is not even about the right words. He's not waiting for the superstars of Christianity. What draws Jesus in? It's not right words. It's a right heart. Jesus, he desires to be with us. Psalm 34, 18 says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, that he saves those who are crushed in spirit. We can often think that Jesus is far in these moments of our pain, that, that Jesus, he's, he's distant and he doesn't hear us in our pain, but just like any parent, you know, as a parent, when your children are happy, you kind of just leave them alone. They're doing well, you know, but in the moment of pain, the moment your child cries out for you, you are, you are straight away, you are there. In the same way, God is a loving dad, that he, in this moment of pain, he's not distant, He's not far from you. He wants to draw close to you. I don't know about you, but sometimes my most used prayer, this is legit. One of my most used prayer, even in my prayer journal, is just help. Amen. So fancy words. It's not, it's not crazily thought out, constructed words. It's just simply a sigh. If anything, it is just a, a, just a soft help. Help me. Help me be a good parent. Help me be a good husband. Help me just to do life well. Help me be a good version of myself. Help me be a good Christ follower. Help me be a good example. Just help. Just a sigh. Acts 17, 27 it urges us, God decides for us to seek Him and perhaps reach out for Him and find Him even though He is not far from any one of us. Listen, today I just want to encourage you with a simple, simple thought. And that is your sigh is a shout in the ears of a loving God. I know it's simple and it can be so simple that we almost miss it, but God, He's not angry with you. He's not even indifferent about you. God is not dead. He's not deaf and he's not distant. God is madly in love with you. In Psalm 56 verse 8, it says that God, he keeps track of all my sorrows, that he has collected all my tears in his bottle, that he has recorded each and every one in his book. Can you believe that? That is how close our God is. You're not being judged. You're not being ignored. And as you sit at your child's bed, not knowing what to pray, as you think about your parents or your grandparents and maybe you're overwhelmed with grief or concern or fear, as, you, as you're concerned about your business or your job or your education, realize God is keeping track. God is collecting. God is taking notes. And as you, as Psalm 37, 4 says, 
as you take delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. The Apostle Paul, he says in Romans 8, 26, he says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray for. You with me on that? Like, man, you like you look around, you're like, I don't even know how to pray. Like, I don't even know what to pray in this situation. What am I praying for? Like, we look around, there's so much need. And Paul says, we don't even know what we should pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. It's, some would translate that as maybe that's speaking in tongues, but others also just say it's just a sigh. It's just a... But even that, looking to Jesus, is a shout in the ears of a loving father. The prophet said to Hannah, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. And that's our prayer today. Our prayer today is that you will go in peace. There might be fear, there might be concern, but that you will go in peace, and that God will grant you what you desire and what you've asked of him. So what is your desire? What is it that you really want? Truth is, so many of us, we seek what we want while God is focused on what we need. And then we don't get what we want and we're like, well, God is distant. He doesn't care about me. It's like, no, it's just that he's focusing on what you need. He's focusing on who you can become in this season. I mean, that's why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added to you as well. Focus on what you need. And then God, he will look after what you want. It's amazing how as you focus on the things you need, often the things you want starts to change because God is changing our hearts. Our children these days, we're homeschooling them and all they want to do is get up and play. And we, we just say to them, hey girls, listen, if you do what you need to do, when you need to do it, then a time will come later today when you can do what you want when you want to do them. Isn't that true for all of us? Focus on the things you need to do when you need to do them. And a time will come when you can do the things you want to do when you want to do them. This is a season when we need to seek God like never before. This is a season where we don't seek God for what he can do for us. We don't seek God for what he does. We seek God for who he is. This is a season where we don't seek his hands. We seek his face. We seek who he is. King David said this in Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the days of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and he will set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and I will make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says to the Lord, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Verse 13, I remain confident of this that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. You know, whenever the Bible talks about waiting for God, it's not a passive thing. It's not a, that I'm just like slouched in the couch waiting for God. No, it's waiting with a sense of expectation. It is waiting at the edge of my seat. It is waiting, looking, scanning the horizon. It is like waiting on the bus, waiting on the train. It is looking up on the arrival board at the airport. It is, it is waiting with this sense of expectation. It is like the father who's waiting for his son to return. He's scanning the horizon, waiting. Waiting is not passive, my friends. Waiting, it's active. It says, wait on the Lord. That means we seek him and then we don't go, well, God, if you could get around to it, it'd be great. No, we look for it and we wonder. Where's the answer going to come from? How is he going to do it? Dude, we're waiting with a sense of an expectation. Where does it all begin? It all starts with you seeking God. 
not what he does, who he is. It all starts with Jesus. And I just pray that this season, whether you are someone that has opened your heart to the reality of God before, or this is brand new for you. Maybe you have, you've heard about our church. Maybe you've heard about God. And finally, someone has, you know, talked you into watching a service. And you're here now and you're like, okay, what is this all about? All of this, it's about Jesus. It's about opening your heart and opening your life to the reality of Jesus. How do I do that? Well, not with fancy words. Not with a, a set, you know, rules and regulations. No, it's, it's just about opening your heart to the reality of, hey, there is a God. And he loves me. And he, he actually wants a relationship with me. And I want to give everyone here an opportunity that if you've never opened your life to the reality of God, if you've never opened your life up to a God who loves you and has a plan and a purpose for your life, that this could be your moment. And so I want to give just everyone an opportunity right now. And you know, like whenever we gather in our church, we just, we say, you know, like we, we, we give people an opportunity to respond outwardly, what is going on inwardly. And I want to give you that opportunity right now. Maybe you want to close your eyes so you're not distracted by phones and people around you or whatever. Why don't you just stop whatever you're doing right now? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want every person who wants to say yes to Jesus for the first time, or today you're coming back to Him. When I say three, just to lift your hand. You might be sitting by yourself. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, you're not lifting your hand to me. You're lifting your hand to God. You, you, you're outwardly showing what is going on inwardly. So let's just close our eyes. I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want every person who wants to say yes to Jesus for the first time, or today you're coming back to Him. When I say three, just lift your hand. You ready? One, don't let this moment slip by. Don't put it off to a moment you're not guaranteed you have. We have right here and right now. Two, I'm not talking to anyone else but you. Do you know Jesus? If you don't, this is your moment. I'm not saying become perfect and then He will love you. I'm saying we serve a come as you are Savior. He loves you just the way you are right now. That means there's nothing you can do that makes Him love you more and there's nothing you can do that makes Him love you less. He loves you unconditionally. So when I say three, just lift your hand. You ready? On three, three. Just lift your hand. It's amazing. I know that there are people all the way, all throughout our country and even around the world, people lifting their hands, sitting with their phones in front of the television, a computer, with friends or alone, lifting your hands to Jesus. That is amazing. And we just want to celebrate you. And, you know, I'm sure online there's people right now commenting with little clapping emojis. That's because if this was church, man, we'd be clapping, we'd be cheering you. Because the Bible says the whole of heaven celebrates a person turning to Jesus. And we just know the potential of this decision. And we want to congratulate you. And I want to encourage you, you know, Christianity is not lived out in isolation. I know that we're isolated right now, but that's not our default position. Our default position as a faith movement, it is that we do life together. Humans are created for community. And so Christianity is outlived in community. And so I want to just encourage you to, to take contact with us and just to make that contact. And you can, you can write to us directly or you can email next at hillsong.dk. The, the details should be on the screen right now. Next at hillsong.dk. And just let us know. Hey, I made a decision. I, I, I want to connect with church or if you're on our watch.hillsong.dk, you can just scroll a little bit further down. There's an, you can click on the button there that you've made a decision to follow Jesus. And uh, why are we asking for you to contact us? Well, two things. Number one, we want to send you a Bible. We want to just give you a Bible for you to get started in following Jesus. When you connect your life with Jesus, you just change the direction of your life. Now we've got to walk it out. It starts with getting to know Jesus, reading His Word. Second of all, we want to find a local community, a local church community that you can be connected with, whether it's in Denmark or Malmö or it's anywhere around the world. We want to find a local church for you. So why don't you contact us and let us help you walk this out? Hey, maybe you're sitting here and you, you are following Jesus and, and you just, this, this size that you have lifted up. I just want to encourage you and say that sigh, it is a shout in the ears of our God. Your prayers are being heard. 
your prayers are being heard. And I want to encourage you, do not stop praying. Do not stop reading. Do not stop seeking God. He is hearing you. He is bottling every tear. He is recording every prayer. You, he is not deaf to your prayers. And I want to encourage you, do not give up. God is not angry with you. He's not mad at, mad at you. He's mad about you. He loves you so much, so much. But we want to just pray together right now. And I want to pray for anyone here that, you know, whatever that concern is, whatever it is that you are sighing about, I want to pray about that. And again, I don't know how to pray in these moments, you know, because there's so many situations going on right now from Corona to cancer to, you know, just the common cold to everything in between. And, you know, we just, what's so amazing about our God is that he's so big, yet he's so personal. And I think his greatness is seen is in, in his attention to details. And so why don't we just pray and why don't we close our eyes and why don't we just pray together? So Jesus, we just pray for every person that's here now, Lord God. You see what's weighing on their hearts, Lord God. And I just pray for your peace. Lord, we pray really what the prophet said, go in peace and may you grant your servant, may you grant your people what they have asked of you. Lord, whatever it is that's, that's causing them to sigh at night, Lord God, whatever's causing them to cry themselves to sleep, Lord God, I just, I pray, Lord God, that shout in your ears, Lord God, that you will show yourself strong on behalf of anyone who calls upon your name. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We lift up every person around us, Lord God, that don't know you. I pray that this will be a season, Lord God, where you can, you can reach out, Lord God, and their hearts will return to you. We pray this in your wonderful name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, whatever, whatever concerns that you might have, and you know, if there's anything we can do practically to help you, we would love to do that. We have, we have a team ready. In Denmark, we have hundreds of volunteers ready to help, whether it's, you know, buy groceries, walk your dog, I mean, whatever. Uh, we we want to just be a help. And we are we are across the country, we're in Malmö. And, you know, obviously we have churches that in our family around the world as well. And if there's anything we can do to help you, anything from praying for you to practically helping you, why don't you email us on, on just this email address, care at hillsong.dk. Just email us on that email and let us know. You know, if you are in Denmark, uh, every night uh, from 8 to 10 o'clock at night, uh, we have a pastoral team as well on the phone. And if there's anyone that you want to either just talk to, you know, about what you need of help, or maybe you just want to talk to a friendly person, I promise you, a pastoral team, most of them are super friendly. No, they're all friendly. And, and they're ready and they're wanting to, to speak with people and, uh, you know, and just, and just have a chat. If you just want to talk to someone, uh, then, then you can call and they would love just to sit and just have that conversation with you in Danish or in English. And I'm sure we can find whatever language, Swedish, whatever language it is uh, that you would like to have that conversation. And so that would be amazing. But hey, we just want to say thank you for joining us today. It's been amazing. So it, I, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed with this opportunity that we have to reach out to thousands of people across Denmark and across the world. And we want to say thank you. And, you know, I also just want to let you know, it's your generosity that enables us to do what we do. You know, to be able to put services on like this, um, it's your generosity. And I want to thank you. We, we, every week we give people an opportunity that if they want to help financially, uh, just with church, but also just continue to honor God with your tithe and your generosity to continue to do that. And I pray that in this season that we don't draw back. It's so easy when there is uncertainty and shifting circumstances. It's so easy. The natural response is to hold on. But we live in an upside down kingdom where, where, where God encourages us to continue to be generous, not to be foolish or unwise, but to be generous. And I just want to encourage you to continue your generosity. And if you call Hillsong home, you know, we always call this a family moment because we just say, hey, if you're blessed by this, why not also help carry the burden of it, including the finances? So there's different ways you can give uh, on the screen right now. There's mobile pay and Swish and there's bank transfers. And, you know, you can always email us on finance at hillsong.dk. If you've got any questions about transferring or whatever it might be, but we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity in this season. It enables us to continue to do this and continue to put on church, even though it's a different format, 
we're still having church together. So thank you for your continued generosity. So, hey, thank you so much for being with us. We love you so much. Make sure you check it, stay, stay around for a few minutes. There's a whole bunch of slides coming up with information about different things that are happening throughout the week. Every day there's different things on our different social media accounts that you can be part of. Why don't you, you do me a favor and whatever platform you're on right now, why don't you like, subscribe, whatever it is that you need to do, and then share it. Let's share the good news. Let's, let's spread love, not virus, okay? Let's spread the love. Why don't you share this message with someone? Send it to some friends. Send it to some people that you think they will never watch it. You watch. You watch God take this and actually do something in people's lives. So, hey, God bless you. Thanks for being with us. And we'll see you throughout the week on all the different platforms. And we'll definitely see you next Sunday. Thank you. Jesus lives in me.